So the, the average age, what's the average age of the people you talk to? What would you say is the range? Okay, maybe not oh. the average age. What's the range? Okay, the, the, the range is big. I would say it's between 9, 9, and 62. <laughs> Wait, 9? Yeah, 9 to 62. To 62. Wait, 9? Oh my, okay. Yeah, that's a... So, the 9-year-olds, how do they get into pornography? Most of them. Yeah, they just don't know any better. They they have a phone. They have been addicted to the phone since to the age of one, one or two years old. Yeah. And then just one day it comes up on their screen and they feel they feel excited. That's how, how I felt. I saw I saw the first erotic images maybe when I was six and they were exciting. I didn't I did not realize that there was sexual excitement at the moment and my hormones were were not developed at that point. So it wasn't really sexual drive, but well, let's say someone is nine. Yes, they will like those images. And I mean, it's not it's not normal because I think most people get into pornography around 12 or 13 or 14. So nine is kind of an outlier. But at the same time, I would expect that this this age will actually de decrease as, as we go forward because porn is so accessible. Yeah. It's super accessible and... It really takes an effort on the parent's side to stop, you know, to block pornography, to use all, all those different kinds of family security solutions, different apps and so on and so forth. So it's very important for parents to be, to be actually like super cautious and really realizing that this okay. is an issue. So let's talk more about that, the parents, because, you know, I'm thinking about this and I'm not married, I don't have kids, but I, I'm very concerned about how hard it, it's going to be to raise a child <laughs> in today's society with, you know, you don't know what's online. There's, there's TikTok, there's Instagram, and then everything from there is just a spiral towards God knows what. So how would you advise a present day parent to monitor their child's activities? Well, first of all, get that blocker. Make sure that you install all possible apps, all possible protections, whether it's on your router or on the phone or on the laptop, desktop, whatever. You have to do it. You have to do it for yourself so that you don't see any content that could trigger you. And then your child does not see you watching any content, even if it's accidental. And then, of course, you prevent the child from getting access to that content. With that said, D don't worry about it too much. Yes, be protective. Yes, be be cautious. But at the same time, you cannot control what your what your kid looks at. Let's say it's school. Someone might show pornography to them, and yeah, this is normal. A as look, as a parent, your job is to raise a conscious kid. So the idea is to tell them to be open minded. And at the same time, think for themselves. That's the most important thing. A lot of dangers, a lot of risks will come their way, including drugs, including pornography, including being a part of a gang or something like that. And if your kid is very conscious and you taught them to be independent, not to just follow, follow the herd automatically, then they will make the right decisions on their own. And also it's, it's good when you talk about things like pornography without moralizing. So you just ask them questions. Why do you think excessive masturbation might be a problem? Why do you think pornography might be a problem? Maybe the kid realizes and says, well, I don't think that this is real. It's just people acting. And you say, you're right. You're right. So you are asking them questions and using this Socratic method to actually activate their mind first so that they make their own opinion without imposing your own opinion on them. So that would be that would be one example. And just 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 to give another practical tip because I'm a parent, I have a 13-year-old and I think it's, it's super important to uh, to let your kid develop on their own and let them make mistakes. Don't 
don't be like a teacher. Your goal is to be more like a friend. Listen to them, understand them, ask how they feel, what's going on, what's on their mind. And then when you are a friend with them, let's say they get, they start getting addicted to pornography and you have this friendship between you. Then they might feel comfortable opening up to you about it. Mm -hmm. And then you can intervene. You can offer help. Let's say you help them like take my free course. They take it and, and, and they forget about it. It was a joke. Being friends with your kid is probably the most important thing in your relationship because everything will flow out of that. Yeah, I see. It's not always easy though, because there are times when you have lived through something maybe, and you know how dangerous it is. And it seems like you're trying to help your kid understand that this is probably dangerous. And they're like, yeah, no. I think it's really hard for a parent. It's one of the most difficult things to do. I, I mean, I'm I'm speaking even though I do not have parental experience, but just imagining someone you love going towards something dangerous, and you can clearly see that's where they're headed. I think it's very difficult to not try to impose your opinion in some way. It's easy to say, it's easy to theorize, but for most people, it's really hard. Absolutely, and. I like how Stephen Covey talks about this in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think he said that you need to have this proportion. 80% is just unconditional love toward your kid. And 20% is kindly teaching the principles that you've learned. Yes. And, you know, you said, you said something that they should not even by accident, see you uh, viewing that sort of content. So that places an emphasis on how you live your own life because kids observe. And even from when they're very little, you know, less than two years old, every once in a while, your child just surprises you because I've been around kids and every once in a while, the child just surprises you by copying an action. And you're like, when did you learn this? You're shocked. So even when you think your kids aren't watching, they're observing how you live your life, how you talk to people, the way you communicate, what you prioritize. And if you're actually doing the things that you tell them are right, or whether you're doing the things that you tell them are wrong. So kids learn by watching. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so I, I, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I would even take it to this woo woo territory. I think that even though kids might not see you watching porn, but like you do it very secretively and they never know. I do believe that they still know because you are a role model for them. Yeah. And that behavior, it, it, tra it translates into your energy. So it creates this low vibration energy in you and your kids will notice that. And they, they will see that something is, is not good and they will copy this. Just your like, just like you said. Weak and they also feel that. Yes, they feel that. And in the same way, you are influencing their character. Let's say, for example, you're less confident. As a result, they copy your character. They become less confident as well. So that's if you have kids and you are addicted to pornography, this should be a huge motivation factor for you. Quit for not just for yourself, but for your kids as well. 